Hi friends! Today I have the task to quickly develop a controller for a spot welding machine. The device itself is with ion transformer designed for welding lithium-ion batteries. I could buy ready-made controllers from AliExpress. There you can find both inexpensive simple controllers for 10 to 15 bucks and heaped up controllers with all sorts of indicators, display and convenient control costs up to 30 to 50 bucks. The reason why I didn't buy a ready-made one but decided to make my own version from scratch is quite simple. Firstly, in this case there would be no video and secondly, I don't want to wait for the parcel for several months. The task is as follows. It is required to create a complete spot welding control controller as simple, cheap and reliable as possible. At the same time, it must be possible to adjust not only the welding time, but also the power or welding current, that is, to have two adjustments. Here is a circuit. Yes, no microcontrollers. Just a regular 555 timer, a driving opto semester, a triac, and primary circuit that drives a welding transformer. Yes, I know such a thing could be made, for example, on the Arduino. You can even add the display and so on. This controller can be used for welding machines, including powerful ones and spotters. Also suitable for jewelry works. In general, it's up to you how to use it. Now I will briefly tell about the functionality. In fact, it is 2-in-1 phase pulse power regulator and timer. It consists of two parts, a small control circuit and a power triac that switches the load. We have two variable resistors, one of them regulates the power, the second the load, connecting time or welding time. The circuit is connected to the transformer. When you press the button, the triac opens and supplies power to the transformer. After the time set by the resistor, the triac closes and disconnecting the transformer. And it doesn't depend on how long you hold down the button or how quickly you release it. The welding time is stable. All controllers are based on the timer NE555. Button is any low power, preferably with good isolation for safety. Although in this part of the circuit the voltage isn't dangerous and completely decoupled from the mains. But anyway, the security is never excessive. The power supplied to the load is regulated in the usual phase pulse manner, as in dimmers. I already told you how the dimmer works. I highly recommend watching that video. That is, by rotating the power regulator, we can cut off parts of the sinusoid and adjust the power, hence the welding current, from a few percent to almost 100%. This circuit is suitable for working with transformers up to 3 to 4 kW. Only the track must be more powerful for controlling more powerful loads. The control circuit is powered by a stabilized DC source with a voltage of 10 volts. For this, a separate low-power mains transformer with a rectifier, a power filter and a stabilizer on the 7810 microcircuit was used. The control currents are scanty. There is no need to install a stabilizer on the radiator. The supply low-power transformer is any for 5 to 10 watts. The voltage of the secondary winding is 14 to 18 volts at a current of 200 to 300 milliamps. Also, you can use a 12-volt switching power supply instead. About the turn-on time of the track. With these components, when using precision resistors with a tolerance of 1%, the minimum time will be 60 to 70 milliseconds, the maximum 550 milliseconds. The range can be expanded by selecting the indicated resistors. A few words about the components and the board. Before installing on the board, pins 3 and 5 of the Mach 3061 octocoupler must be broken off. As you can see, I broke the wrong leg, so in the end it didn't look out neatly. Operation indication is provided by a LED and an active buzzer, which isn't shown in the diagram. The track is protected by an RC circuit, which is necessary if the device is operated with an inductive load. Printed circuit board. I developed two versions of the board. The first one you can see in the video is for home lot technology. The second is more advanced for ordering at a factory. The second version is double-sided with reinforcement of power current carrying paths. Milled sections are also provided to avoid spark breakdown. Both boards will be in the project archive which can be downloaded from the link in the description. 
Gerber files are made for the second version and they are in a separate folder. If you want to have beautiful factory boards, just take this folder named Gerber and without unpacking, upload it to the site of our sponsor, GLCPCB. Next, select the options you need, that is the thickness of the PCB, solder mask color, track coverage and so on. Pay for the order and get the highest quality boards. GLC PCB prices are quite humane. The size, number of layers and form factor of the boards can be anything within reasonable limits, so I recommend. You will find a link to the company's website in the description under the video. As for the track, its parameters mainly depend on your needs. Voltage is 500 to 600 volts and above. If possible, I highly recommend using tracks in pin design. At the same time, given the pulsed and short-term operation of this regulator, it isn't necessary to use large cooling radiators for the track. The control button can be brought out with wires to any convenient place, or you can use a pedal instead of a button. I connected the low power transformer to our controller. About 18 volts were fed to the control circuit from the laboratory power supply. A light bulb is connected to the output of the transformer. It will simulate the welding process. An oscilloscope is connected in parallel to the light bulb in standby mode. I set the power regulator to the maximum, the time regulator to the minimum. We press the button and see that the impulses have run. At the output there is an almost complete sinusoid that is the maximum power. Next, turn down the power slightly and repeat the process. It is clearly seen that sinusoid is cut off and the light not so bright. And now the power is almost at the minimum, the lamp barely glows, the sine wave is cut off even more, so this function works fine. You may have noticed that the pulses run for a certain time and then the output voltage disappears. The minimum time, as we can see, is 70 milliseconds. The maximum time is 550 milliseconds. This function also works properly. The time limits, as already mentioned, are set by the selection of the indicated resistors. In this case, I adjusted this controller to work specifically in a spot welding machine for batteries. If you weld more serious things and need more time, then we adjust with these resistors. Of the shortcomings, I can note that the circuit has a mains monitoring unit and the control isn't synchronized with the mains. But in this case, this doesn't have a tangible negative effect on the operation of the circuit. The second drawback can be called the fact that unlike industrial machines that can be weld with several pulses and their number is chosen by the operator, our version works differently. One press, one pulse. This can't be called a serious drawback since I have previously made a bunch of devices with similar controls and I will note that the welding is quite decent. And if necessary, you can press the button again and repeat the process without removing the electrodes from the welding place. There are much more advantages, simplicity and lack of microcontrollers, so anyone can repeat it. The circuit doesn't require any adjustment and will work immediately if the components are in condition and there are no installation errors. Among the advantages is the ability to adjust the welding time and power over a wide range, the low cost of components. Even if you buy components, this controller will cost cheaper than similar ones from China. This video was prepared for those who love to create with their hands and do not like to wait for months for parcels from China. And for everyone else, AliExpress to help. There are bulks of these type controllers. Perhaps this is all I wanted to say. The full archive of the project, as always, can be found in the description. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. It will greatly help the channel's promotion and speed up the release of new videos. Now I say goodbye. Until next time. With you was Kassian TV.